So you're in your document, and you now need to figure out your structure. Just like a story has a beginning, middle, and an end, most publications also have that three-part structure. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of how to create that structure, let's talk about that format. So what are these three parts? We begin with our front matter, move on to the body matter, and then there's the back matter. In this example, our front matter is like a business policy strategy report. It'll have common elements, like a table of contents, memos, etc. The body matter is the actual report. It's the meat and potatoes of your report. It's broken up into uh, chapters or parts or sections, and then each subheading, etc. goes into detail about each part. The back matter then includes elements like the glossary and the endnotes. Now the order of these items can vary based on the requirements of your document. So always refer to whatever either company, class, or other style guide that you're using. But let's dig in a little deeper. Okay, front matter, body matter, and back matter. In this example, we're going to set forth um, several requirements for our document. In the front matter, are, we'll have a title page, which is just a cover page. Um, typically has, you know, a company logo and, and who's working on the report, the day of the report, that kind of thing. It's the first page, but it's not actually technically called a page of the document, or page zero of the document. Now the rest of the front matter, starting with the table of contents, etc., is going to have page numbers, and uh, they're going to be lowercase Roman numeral. Okay, starting in our main report, what we're going to do is switch over to standard numerals, 1, 2, 3, etc., and we're going to restart numbering at 1. So we might have had 10, 20, however many pages in our front matter, but let's say there were 10 pages. The body matter would not start at page 11, it would restart at page 1. Okay, um, we will cite, in this example, we'll be using endnotes versus footnotes, and we'll make sure that when we insert exhibits, which are charts, graphs, uh, other things, that we're numbering them uh, based on where they are in the document. So if we're in part one, then the first exhibit in part one is 1.1, and then if we've broken things down so that 1.1 is actually an element, then any item within that is 1.1.1 would be the first one in 1.1. The first exhibit in the area called 1.2 would be 1.2.1, etc. And then our back matter, uh, we're going to go back to lowercase Roman numerals. We're actually going to uh, restart the numbering, not at 1, but pick up where we left off. So if our front matter had 10 pages of content, then we would restart numbering in our back matter at 11. Um, in this back matter, we'll have our endnotes, and it's important to know that we will be numbering these in regular numerals, not lowercase Roman numerals. We'll also format our, our endnotes uh, with a hanging indent. Okay, so these are the requirements that we're going to set forth in our document. Let's now go forth and uh, get into the nuts and bolts. So here we are in Microsoft Word. We have the skeleton of our, our sample document. It does not have content, etc. We're just going to focus on structure. So I've tried to create the three elements. So we've got our front matter at the top. The middle part here is the main body of our document, the body. And then we've got our back matter here. OK. So we had several requirements. One of the requirements is that the title page, while well, part of the document, is considered page zero. So that has to be its own separate element. Uh, the elements of table of contents through executive summary uh, will have page numbering, but they'll be lowercase Roman numerals. Uh, starting with part one, that will begin our body, and it will return to regular numbers. And then coming into the glossary, um, we will then return to lowercase Roman numerals and pick up where we left off. So how do we accomplish this? Well, what we need to do is separate this document 
into multiple areas or chapters, parts, etc. Now, you may be familiar with a concept called a page break. Now, I want to let you know that structurally, page breaks are good to push content to the next page, but has no impact whatsoever on page numbering, headers and footers, etc. So, although good format, because you definitely don't want to hit the enter key five billion times in order to push content to the next page, you'll use the um, page break to do that. And you, you really need to use the page break for, to do that. Um, do not manually do the enter key to try to position content to the next page. Uh, changing a single letter or a single word could uh, change each line, which could have a cascading effect throughout your document. So if you need to push content to the next page, do a page break. However, if you want to break your document into multiple areas, which we will call sections, you need to do a section break. So uh, first things first, if we know that the title page has to be page zero. What we're going to do is put a section break between the title page and our table of contents. Uh, unlike going to an insert and then page break, we will go to page layout, and you'll notice that there is a breaks drop down. Uh, we could do a simple page break if you want, but down here these section breaks are what we want to pay attention to. Now in this document we're going to do it uh, a little bit more technical. Uh, we're going to consider that this is a, a more green type document where we're going to print the document double-sided. This saves paper, etc. That means in order to do page numbers, it's really best to have the page numbers on the outside corners. To accomplish this, this means that we're going to be having both even and odd pages. So the page number will be on the far right um, on one page and the far left on another page. So every starting page of a new area of our document or a section will be on a fresh new page, which tends to be an odd page. So if the first page is page one, um, uh, technically, uh, we'd want to do an odd page break. Okay, so I click this odd page section break. It looks like I've simply done a uh, standard page break. Under the hood, however, if we go in here, you notice on your home tab, there's a show hide option. If I click that, we'll see that there is a section break here on the title page. So I can format my title page however I want, put the company, etc. Right? Um, but now I have a new break. So uh, the next thing I want to do is do another section break. I'm now going to do a section break between this um, this part of the front matter and the main body. So I will again go to page layout, break, and I'm going to do an odd page break. I'm going to do one more of those in front of the, the end or the back matter. There we go. I've got all of my page breaks are now in place. I now need to start thinking about the page numbers. Okay. So uh, we want to automate as many things as possible. We do not want to do manual page numbers. That that would be, you know, in a very, very, very small document, okay. Tedious, but not impossible. In a large document, um, you'd be pulling out your hair. So let's let's automate, automate, automate. How do we do this? There are several ways we can accomplish this. Um, you'll notice from the insert menu, there's an option for page number. I'm not going to jump there right now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decide that I'm going to put them page numbers at the bottom corners of the document. So I'm going to go to my footer, and instead of looking at all of these options, I'm going to go to Edit Footer. Remember, I wanted to have uh, different page numbers for each side of the document. So I'm going to go to different odd and even pages. Okay, great. Um, so now if I'm on the odd page, I want to insert page numbers, and I'm going to do bottom of the page, and on the odd page, I'm going to have it at the far right hand side. Okay, so I've got that in place. 
coming down. You'll notice I had an odd page and it jumped from page 1 to page 3. Well, before we, we work on getting rid of this page, let's start here. So now I've got my cursor in this area and I'm in a new section, a new area. I'm going to go to page number and instead of inserting it again, I'm going to go to format page numbers. At this point, I'm going to go to start at and I'm going to change it to 1. I'm also going to change the format. Remember, in each area I can change the format of my my page numbers as long as I have a section break in place. So it's as easy as going to number format, choosing the option I want, and hitting OK. OK, so I've got lowercase Roman numeral here. You notice I've got regular numerals here, and regular numerals down here. Great, OK, I've got lowercase Roman numerals where I want them to be. Uh, so we can see what we need to do. I'm going to exit the, the, the footer. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say that the list of exhibits will be on its own page. So I'm not going to do a section break. I'm going to do a page break. Same thing here for the executive memo and the executive summary. Okay, so I've got a section break and just standard page breaks. You'll notice that I've got a lowercase Roman numeral for the first page, but I've got nothing on my second page. I do, however, have quote unquote page three on that. That's because I have different odd and even, and I didn't decide or I didn't uh, dictate what my odd and even options were because at that time I didn't have an even page. So I can either go to that to the the footer and edit it that way, or if I double click down here into the the footer section, you'll notice that I can quickly go in and edit each of these. Now this is an even page, so I'm going to come down here, put my cursor, go back to page number, bottom of the page, and make sure it's on the left-hand side. So I've got lowercase Roman numeral 2, 1, which is the beginning, 3, and this is 4. Perfect! Okay, so I've got my formatting done for this area. Perfect. Um, something else I'm going to do is with my cursor in my um, in my section, I want to pay attention. I'm going to unlink this link to previous. What this does is separate this section from the previous section. At this point now, I can take this page number and erase it from my title page and yet keep it down here. So I've got my page numbers here, I've got my page numbers here, etc. Now this area, where we're starting our parts, we want to return to regular numbers, which we have, but we want to restart them to page one. Uh, it's as easy again as going to page number, format page numbers, start at, change it to one. Okay. So I've got four, now one. Now this is three because we have uh, not put any uh, page breaks into the section. So I'll close my header and footer. I'll come down to this area and just put in some page breaks so that we can confirm that our formatting is looking good for both odd and even. And so now we've got page two page one, page three, it's looking good. Finally, we're going to come down here and the end of our document we're going to come back to lowercase Roman numerals. Alright, so I'm going to double click here. I'm going to come back to page number, format page numbers. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things. First of all, I'm going to return to lowercase Roman numerals. Uh, the catch is I will eventually do the start at and dictate that it's going to be a, a different a different number. Uh, for instance, I could start this at, and if I put in, say, let's pretend I've got 20 pages of content. Well, if I, I put this at 21, it'll automatically put in the number, so I don't need to write in the lowercase Roman numeral numbers for the page numbers here. I can just put in the regular numbers, which are easier for me to convert, etc., etc. So I will use that start at and simply 
you know, after we've put together our content, we have all of our, our front matter together, and we have the final page count, we can go back in and change that last element of the document. Okay, so now we have our title page. This title page does not have a page number whatsoever. We've got the beginning of our front matter with lowercase Roman numerals. We've got, coming down further, the main uh, body of our document. We've got regular numbers. And in the back matter, we've returned to lowercase Roman numerals and then we're starting at whatever number we're leaving off at the top. Great! Uh, we've basically got our structure in place. So we've we've discussed how the difference between page breaks and section breaks. We've discussed how to have different odd and even pages um, using the header and footer option to, to make that checkbox. Um, we discussed how to undo the link to previous. Uh, that can be also handy if for instance, you have headers, and in each header you're telling your, your audience where you are. For instance, here, you know, if this was part three, uh, and I wanted this area to say part three, and this area to say part two, um, I'd actually have to, instead of doing a page break, I'd have to do a section break, and then I can have a unique header and footer. At that point, I would uncheck the link to previous in each header, so that I can have a custom header in each major area of my document. You'll notice very quickly that uh, if you're working in a team uh, and each individual me member is writing his or her section of a document, um, an individual writer can use a page break, but an individual writer should never use the section break. Section breaks should only be used by the group that is responsible for the structure of the final document. Uh, whether that's your compiling or editing group, um, that would be the group that should use section breaks. Um, individual writers or, or participants in the project should only use page breaks if they need to push content to the next page. So this is just a quick overview of headers and footers, page numbers, and how to uh, use uh, both page breaks and section breaks to structure your document.